I don't know what it was. He's walking upright like a man. Sightings in and around Vermont. Bigfoot sightings across New England have been reported. Red glowing eyes, about seven feet tall. Red eyes, big old fang claws coming out through. Three inches long, you know, just sharp as they could be. There has been another UFO sighting flying over the Royal Botanic Gardens. There are 500 UFO sightings in the world every month. The truth is out there. So that, that was me starting out uh, not understanding how Reaper works, the thing that we've been using for 118 episodes now. So that's cool. <laughs> you, you, you forgot to hit the I'm ready button. Yeah, that's me. <laughs> Um, oh, so we're, we're recording this a day later than uh, usual because I had, had family time, took the, mm. the, the wife and the baby out to Carnival, the Caribbean festival. It was... Uh, oh, it was Carnival? Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a Carnival festival. It was oh, okay. We had jerk chicken. It was good. There was... Um, we went early, so like the costume contest isn't till later, so there weren't a lot of costumes while we were there, but there mm-hmm. was some... Um, if side boob can be violent... I would say, like, violent side boob. Um, <laughs> so it was pretty good. There was chicken. There was side boob. There was a coworker met us there. Uh, it, it was nice. And I, was, I also saw the whitest, the whitest man I've ever seen in my life. And like At the, a Caribbean festival? The, there were plenty of, like, there, there, was, there was white I people mean, there. I mean, you was, exist. So, like. Yeah. The, 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 but here's the thing. Like, I was dressed appropriately for say a Caribbean festival in the middle of August in the middle of it was it was at Canton so it's the five um uh, baseball fields there oh in in Socrates, in Socrates yeah or so, as or as uh, our one mutual friend Nick not not the Nick who lived in who lives in Kingston the Nick the other Nick yeah. once said um uh sugar titties sugar, yes sugar titty it's out in sugar he, titties yeah, and he called it sugar titties. Most people were dressed appropriately for being in a baseball field in the middle of August. Field meaning no, aka no shade, except for like the pavilion. Yeah, it's a pretty rough. It's and actually it's, like it's pretty. It's pretty exposed. Yeah, it's very exposed. It was like seventy five, eighty, so it was decent. Out, we had a, a fan on the stroller, but everyone's dressed as you would expect people to be dressed at a Caribbean festival in the middle of August, except this forty something man. In a full suit with tied leather shoes, it was, it was it was jarring. It was fucking jarring. Like the contrast between him and everyone around him was startling. That's it was remarkable. Upsetting to me. I, I don't know why that's upsetting to me, but it is. <laughs> like, like I can't pinpoint the exact reason, but there's it's. It's triggering bad feelings in my brain, and I ha- I, I'm only imagining it, so I can only imagine what it was like seeing it. It's like there's a DJ, there's a parade, there's a smoke and jerk chicken in the air. You get, like every four steps, you smell weed. There's a weed. There's weed hot sauce there, um, and like there. Wait, there's did you say weed huts or weed hot spots? Hot sauce. There was oh, like okay. a, like a little like weed food booth, uh, but like. It was like there's like loud music. Everyone's dressed like comfortably to scantily, and then just suit man. It was crazy. I wanted to know what was what. Like I don't. I want to know what who. Because he clearly didn't see a fucking poster before he showed up. Like I want to know what he thought he was going to. <laughs> it's the wildest shit. I mean, I mean, he could. I've got bad thoughts that I don't want to say on the podcast. Oh, no. no. Oh, like, the- a lot of bad... Like, there's a lot of... There, my brain can go a lot of, like, dark ways, and I'm not... I'm not going there. Yeah. Um. It, it, yeah. It was it was crazy. And then the other thing is we are looking at some old pictures in, in, in bed the other day, and uh, <clears throat> my wife was like, holy shit. And I was like, what? And she goes, your beard... And I was like, oh, shit, because if you look at some old pictures, my beard's down to my nipples and very full. And I was like, what happened? Because now it's, like, barely, like, eight inches. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It's, it's, it's you know, thin when and, and kind of brittle. 
And uh, I was like, and I was like, oh, oh I, I, I take hair pills because of my hairline and my uh, masculinity and hairline. I was like, is that fucking? Anyway, it turns out I connected some dots because I was like, a year ago, I had the, the a beard upon which people, strangers would remark. And now, yes. I, yes. now I don't. And it turns out when you have a baby, it, yeah. it'll drop the testosterone levels of the father for some reason, like by like 34%. Really? My baby stole my fucking beard. <laughs> like it used to get in the it used to get in the way. Like I used to like couldn't play guitar in certain positions because like it would lay across the strings. <clears throat> and I she didn't stole my beard. Ah. That that... uh, God. My baby that's... stole my beard. That's hilarious. Um Oh jeez. So uh while you were while you were looking at uh aggressive side boob. Um, it was pretty great. Yeah. I was I was at home sleeping and oh, I cool. I originally so originally I was like prepped to do the podcast, right? Yeah. And then I was sitting and I'm like cuz I went downstairs, I had my breakfast, well actually it was more like a lunch. Um and I was like Wow, it's weird that Brandon hasn't c- contacted me yet. Like, I was just like, because I hadn't, like, my brain hadn't made a connection yet. So, like, I'm like, yeah. that's weird. And then I'm just sitting there and I'm like, ah, uh, yeah, butts. Yep, yep. That's literally. I butts that, and chicken. <laughs> that's literally how my brain, like, connected the dots. <laughs> so then I fell asleep and then did a, a two hour long bike ride and hated myself afterwards. Two hours long? Yeah. It's quite a bike ride. Yeah, I think I went like 28 miles, which is horrifying to me. Oh, wow. You, okay, so once again, this is hyper-local, but uh, have you ever ridden a bike across the walkway over the Hudson? Oh, not for a very long time, but yes. So going from uh, west to east, so from our side of the river to the other side, uh, yeah. Really fucking easy. I can do that super easy. It's super quick. Um, there isn't like a sh- like a strong grade that is going down, yeah. so it's not like it's not like um, it's a problem going uphill one way and downhill the other way because there's like explicit downhill bits on that, right? So yeah. and then there's it's like a um, it's like an arc, right, between the two yeah. like pylon thingies or whatever or supports. So, uh, when you're going across it, you're you're uphill for part of the way, but then you're downhill. For some fucking reason, and I don't know what the reason is, whenever I go east to west, it is so much harder. <laughs> and I'm not oh, sure. There's a spot I where the, there's the slightest of inclines, like the slightest grade, and it's super easy riding this trail one way. And on the way, because it's for fucking ever. And on the way back, you're just like always putting in a little more work, and it's so painful always going back. The well, well, the other thing too is like, I feel like I can't retain speed as well going one way versus the other way, and I'm like, yeah. I'm not sure if they used just like the type of concrete they used did that deliberately or not, and I don't even know if that's a thing because like my brain's like. <laughs> How the fuck is this happening? Because, like, I can maintain my speed perfectly fine. Like, literally going uphill, I can maintain my speed fine, even. Right? Yeah. But now on this fucking, on this bridge, I lose all my ability to maintain speed. And I'm just like, what is How happening? How many gears are we working with? Huh? Ta- uh, 20. How many gears uh, we... 20? What? It's it, I have up to 20. Yeah. Now I wonder how many gears I have. It's a hybrid. I haven't actually looked in a while. Um, it's like a it's like a hybrid of a mountain bike and a road bike. So I've I don't got have a hybrid Cannondale. I do too. Oh, nice. We might have the I same which hybrid model. cab. We we might have the same bike. Yeah. Did you buy possible. it from ne- near my house? Yes, I did. We might actually have the same. We bike. might have the same bike. <laughs> it is entirely possible. Uh, is it is it really bad whenever you hit a bump on it? No. No. Mine's no, pretty bad it's when pretty I hit great. a bump. Huh? <laughs> so it's actually, it does that. It's pretty great. It's got Do shocks. You have, it has shocks. I don't have shocks. Yeah. Mine's closer oh, Mine's okay. closer to the road bike side than the... Uh, oh, gotcha. Than the mountain bike side, so... Yeah. There's... If you're a destination kind of bike rider, if you park um, near 
Rosendale, where like the big parking lot is. Mm-hmm. Um, if you bike towards New Paltz, about three miles after you go over the uh, the bridge, there's a, a cafe you can only access via bicycle on the rail trail in the woods called the Rail Trail Cafe. It's fantastic because you'll just be like biking through the woods. You'll be like, why do I smell pizza and hear music? And then there's just a clearing with like a little hut and a pizza oven and they make like healthy smoothies because it's a farm and the, just on the edge of the farm happens to border the rail trail. So they built like a pizza oven and a, a little wild. cafe. It's awesome. Honestly. Well, let me think how far, how far along towards uh new Paltz is it from Rosendale? It's, I want to say it's like three miles. Oh, uh, that's uh, a pretty, that's a pretty long hike from my house. That's a very long hike from your house. I you, actually... You'd have to, that's why I said the parking lot. You'd, you'd have to drive. I actually can make it from uh, my house to the Lowe's and New Paltz pretty quickly. Like, it's like a 30-minute... Oh, wow. That's like a 30-minute bike ride. So... Yeah. Anywho, I'm sure people really love hearing about me riding my bike uh, <coughs> around places. With no handlebars. I... No handlebars. I recently did do a bike with no handlebars. I did it. I... You know what really grinds my gears? These fucking electric bicycles. Oh, I hate it. They're going like 20 miles an hour and blowing through like, re- they're, they're just blowing through like street lights and stop signs and shit. And like, I just. Re- At that like, point, you're you're riding a, a moped or a motorcycle. Like. It, it's to the extent where I'm like, they should be illegal without a license. Or I'm kind of like rooting for someone to get hurt pretty bad for them to like, because the police don't do well, anything. Well, does like, it affect they, rich like, white people? No. Well, there you go. Uh, yeah. That's all you need to know about kinks and cops. Yeah. <laughs> Honestly, cops in general, but that's a whole other Yeah. This, unless... Yeah, that's true. <laughs> uh, they, they removed the housing for the homeless people. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> this is Cryptopedia, an exploration of the myths and legends that haunt the human mind. Each week, we'll take you on a journey exploring the mysteries of the world, tackling the tales of monsters, folklore, the paranormal, and that thing that definitely lives under your bed. I'm Brandon. I'm John. And uh, today we're covering lobsters. Uh, send in the dancing lobsters. Send in the dancing lobsters. Uh, another. Uh, 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 thing where I put in a request in the Discord server for the Jackalips going, hey, here's some option, guys. What do you want? They said Globsters. And then I decided, you know what? I've got like four copies on the Globsters. I'll do a grab bag. We haven't done a grab bag in a while. Boom, here's a grab bag. And we're bang for your book. So what what happened to Amanda Bynes? Like, what? I, I Didn't she... Didn't she do, like, lose it a little bit? I mean, she's a, she's a Nickelodeon star, so odds are yes. 86. Probably. Because, like... Oh, someone wrote what happened to Amanda Bynes. She got a face Bynes. tattoo? Oh, she was put into a conservatorship. Uh, okay. Yep. That, there we go. Yeah, that pretty much... Ex- <laughs> I love... <that laughs> the conversation is... Oh, she got a face tattoo? Oh, she was put into a conservatorship. <laughs> I mean, I mean... Uh, like, let's face reality. Anybody who starts doing like uh like television and film like at a super young age let's just say that the the young kids well of like disney and nickelodeon from when we were growing up they all got a little something going on with them you well, know? yeah i mean that's that's because they were fucking like uh, they're they're basically abused well not basically they are literally abused right um, <laughs> yeah. the last thing she was in was Easy A. Wow, when, that was like... 2010. When was Easy A? 2010. Oh, I was, I was going to say 10 years yeah, ago, okay. 12 years ago, even. Okay. Yeah. So, our first Globster oh, uh, I should, comes to us from Santa Cruz. I should Cruz. say yeah. that the reason I brought up Amanda Bynes is because Brandon has an image of Amanda Bynes from the Amanda Show... Court di- dismissed bring in the dancing lobsters, which is why I said bring in the dancing lobsters. So I'm just explaining the joke, as is like, you know, hilarious. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> We're reading from like 12 page written like little essays with p- fun pictures mm-hmm. for us. 
that you can have access to for X dollars. Oh, she's uh, she's month, out of conservatorship. Which pays for a website she's and out voice of boxes. So is Brit- um is Brittany out of, out of conservatorship? I think Amanda Bynes is out of. I literally just said that. Bam Margera was never in a conservatorship, but he's about to leave his guardianship. Who was? Which I, Bam Margera, the oh. guy from Jackass, he was in like he, he went to like rehab for like a year, and he wasn't. The difference between like what he was on in a conservatorship is that uh, there was no financial like control in, uh, thing with yeah. his, his side. <clears throat> it was just he, he needed to. Uh, uh, he needed to. Just- Clean yeah, he just needed to, bit. like, chill the fuck out a bit. That's all. <laughs> he needed to chill the fuck out. So let me crack this AM beer real quick. There we oh, go. Oh, it didn't even, didn't even have any <clears throat> good... You didn't even give us good, like, ASMR. Or... I, was, I was hoping it'd have, like, a cool, fun pop, but it... I saw, it I saw the look on your face. Um, I saw the look on your face. You saw yeah, me just be disappointed. All right. The uh, so our first lobster comes from Santa Cruz, creatively named the Santa Cruz Monster. Uh, mm-hmm. That's pretty very creative. creative. The remains of this creature were found uh, washed ashore in late May 1925, and in an area known today as Natural Bridges State Park. Um, and you know, it, it was Moore's Beach mm-hmm. at the time. Uh, the monster was described as having a terrible smell, a duck-like head attached to a long neck and elephant-like legs along with a whale-like tail. Um, um, so some, some some crazy chimera going on. It looks like... I, I see the image, and it looks like a fucking dolphin. It looks very much like a dead dolphin. It looks almost identical to a dolphin. Just like decomposed yeah and you can tell it smells so, because that little group of five five guys behind it they're standing so far away for people that want their picture taken with the carcass like so far you away. see the the but the the real hero is the person taking the picture because i don't think that they have a telephoto lens on no they're just right up in the stank yeah uh, the uh, reports have a wide range in size from 30 to 50 feet and was discovered by Charles Moore. Uh, descriptions of the monster vary widely uh, from one account to another. In one, it was a serpent-like monster, two feet in diameter, but 50 feet long. Um, the snake-like body had an elephant-like legs every few yards, uh, complete with ivory toenails. Uh, but in many descriptions, the creature had a duck-like head. But in at least one, it had a head bigger than a barrel with eyes larger than an abalone. Um, so I'm looking at the head, and it's not it looks what like I a would dolphin. describe as bigger than... It looks like a fucking dolphin. It looks like a dolphin. Like, or like some kind of like bottlenosed whale or something like that. Yeah, like... It's clearly... like it, pilot whales or something? It's clearly a decomposed thing like that. It's not as decomposed it's as... It's a decomposed cetacean. Yeah, it's not like uh, Trunko, where like it decomposed to the extent where the the fibers uh, that held the muscle together were visible, causing people to think it was furry. Um, it, it's not uh, Trunko. That bad yet. Trunko was a whale penis. Tr- yeah, Trunko was a whale penis. Trunko was a whale penis, Brandon. Uh, I can't wait till I die and people mistake my penis for a cryptid. Uh, the barrel. I'm gonna have taxidermied in a pretty cool way. Um, yeah. The barrel-headed version also had an oval-shaped body with a seven-foot-long neck. Uh, there are pictures of the creature that I have attached in the document. Uh, the president of the Natural History Society of British Columbia, one E. L. Wallace, appeared on the scene. Uh, for some reason, he told the world that the carcass was that of an extinct plesiosaur. So what? He, I think he's just trying to drum up. Uh, some kind of notoriety, but there's absolutely no reason for him to have said that. Wallace's theory is that it had also, been... Also, isn't... Isn't isn't British Columbia a hike from... That's a hike to Santa Cruz, right? Yeah. Because, like, British Columbia's Vancouver area, isn't it? Yeah, BC, yeah. Yeah. What so the it's, fuck? It's a hike. Um... Wallace's theory is that it had been stuck in ice, preserved in a glacier for over 65 million years. And now that the ice had recently melted, thus depositing the corpse of this Mesozoic marine reptile on a beach in Santa Cruz. 
This story, just like Polly Shore, no, Brendan Fraser. Um, this story of an ice encased please Encino Man. Yep, Encino Man. You got did it. Did you just did you just make a fucking Encino Man joke? Excuse I me. Did. I did. You know that hit movie, Brendan Fraser. Polly I mean, Shore. I think it was a hit movie. It's just it wasn't very good. The adopted Baldwin brother. Come on, you can't beat it. Uh, oh, story. <laughs> I watched a movie with Pauly Shore recently. What the fuck was it? It was like a bad That's horror party? movie, huh? Oh, a horror movie. I watched a bad Pauly horror Shore. movie with Pauly Shore in it recently, and it was very strange. What is um, this? <clears throat> what was it? It was like from the eighties, like Sin early nineties. Psycho. No. I, I, all Polly Shore horror movies. It was it was really. Let's fucking see what all horror dot com has. Phantom of the Mall, Eric Revenge, nineteen eighty nine. That's it. That's it. Oh my god, that was it. It was such a bad a fucking. Percent. It was so thirty eight percent on Rotten Tomatoes. Fucking terrible. It was oh, basically wow. it was basically Phantom the Opera, but instead what happened oh, was but in a mall. Okay, so. So rough plot spoilers for Phantom of the Phantom of the Mall. I know you're all like clamoring to see this. Um, so I've I've been watching a lot of um, uh, I'm watching a lot of Shutter when uh, during okay. the week when Christina's not up because she doesn't really like car movies as much. Um, so and like it's my 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 main I put on a Shutter movie in the background and just let it run. So. Yeah. Basically, the plot of this movie is, like, I think it was like a year or two before. I don't remember the specific, like, time frame. Um, the, this dude is like a nail house in a neighborhood where they don't want to, like, leave yeah. the neighborhood because, like, they don't feel like selling it to this developer. So what they fucking do is the developer hires a hitman who burns the house... While the main female lead is in it, and um, yeah, uh, the guy who plays uh, the character's name is Eric. It's played by Derek Rydell. Um, he's he's like he gets trapped in it, and he and his family die, burned alive. Right. Yeah. Um So it cuts forward to like it, it, it. It's in the future now. The 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 mall is like grand opening, right? Um. And yeah. fucking this character, whose name is Eric, is just like crawling around the mall, watching his ex, his ex girlfriend. Like, keep in mind, there was nothing stopping him from going to see her. He just had a burnt up face, yeah. right? Like, so I don't know where he was living before the mall was there, but he's now since yeah. embedded himself into the mall, right? And he's like uh-huh. leaving. He's leaving flowers and gifts. He, you know how the the phantom has the half mask. He breaks a mannequin yeah. head to do the half mask. Oh, perfect. <laughs> um, so and then he just like, he just like murders a fuck ton of people. Like like crushes them into uh like uh, uh electrical panels and shit. Oh oh yeah. And um, he like. So the mall owner has this like asshole son and he kills him by yeah. like like choking him on the escalator somehow. What oh did he like wrap something around yeah. his neck to a fixed point and had the escalator yeah. like drag him? Oh that's yeah, cool. it was I like that. Well, you'd say that, but like it's not great, right? Um <laughs> like its implementation is bad. That's the problem. So he plants a bomb at some point during the movie that will go off when the mall's, like, grand opening yeah. happens. Right? Yeah. So, like, then there's this whole, like, subplot where the girlfriend is now dating, like, now falling for this, like, other dude, right, who's this reporter. Uh-huh. And, like, the whole plot of the movie is is Eric, the phantom, uh trying to Mm -hmm. get back at the the mall developer while also trying to get back with the girl, right? But, like, at the end of the movie, she's like, I don't love you anymore. I'm going with this reporter, dude. (laughs) Bye. Uh, Mall explodes. (laughs) Wait. 
Wait, why does it explode? Because of the bomb. They don't catch the. They don't find the bomb. So the bombs. The the mall's oh, just gone oh. now. So yeah. Um, it's not <laughs> a good movie, and I know I know that I didn't do a great job like retelling it, but like. It's so not a good movie because that is only missing like a subplot involving um, the mayor being like corrupt and being in on the whole thing. Yeah. Um, Because like most of the movie is nonsense. Well, let me feel. All right. So if you're not really digging Polly Shora in this visual media format, Mm -hmm. you'll be glad to know that he. I learned by accident the other day um is taking vocal lessons because he is the lead singer in a band called Polly Shore and the Krusties all people over 60 so if you want to hear Polly Shore be the lead in a cover band of all older gentlemen uh go and uh listen to Polly Shore and the Krusties I think they do a Beastie Boys cover um you you can you can have (laughs) He face. was on the. He was in the Midnight Gospel. Oh, that's an animated. He was. He would have been a, yeah, a voice. Oh, uh, that, that was. That, um, that's not my favorite. But yeah, it, it had some some interesting episodes. Uh, I never it, actually finished it. Oh, Sandman! Holy shit! Watch yeah. that. That just let my my little attention uh, lapse for a minute. And Sandman, watch that shit on Netflix. That's pretty good. Oh, and the Nathan Fielder on uh, the the Hobo on uh, HBO. <laughs> Polly Shore is an enigma. He is. He's definitely. Uh, I got my dad a Polly Shore. Uh, uh, what's that video? Like you give him money, he'll just like, say cameo. what's up. Cameo. I got my dad a Polly Shore cameo, um, and I got you a Hornswoggle yeah. cameo. So I guess hey, even um, <clears throat> Hornswoggle. The, the story in oh, ice in, uh, I do in, want to point yeah. out that in Encino Man, uh, the budget was seven million dollars, and its box office was forty point oh. seven million. It was not a good movie. That's it wasn't fantastic. a great movie. I enjoyed it. It has a seventeen percent like, on Rotten Tomatoes. I wouldn't rave about it, but it is I actually uh, unironically enjoy Encino Man. That's fair. It's dumb. There's the there's I. I like all of the other than the mummy. I really dig like Brendan Fraser. All, a lot of Brendan Fraser's stuff. You don't like the mummy? And Polly Shore adds like a fun. Sp- I I wasn't into the mummy for whatever reason. I like the mummy too. <clears throat> Is that the one with the rock? Uh, that's I think the mummy. No, three. that's Scorpion King. Yeah, that's Scorpion King. Oh, uh, okay. Gotcha. <clears throat> The story of an ice-encased plesiosaur made all the papers. The body of the sea creature was sent to the California Academy of Science in San Francisco, where the entire tall tale was soundly debunked as the corpse of a bared speaked whale with the long neck. Uh, it just, just some blubber. Okay. Um, their findings were published in the Journal of Mammalogy. Uh, earlier theories that the creature was indeed a plesiosaur had been published far and wide and this one article in the journal uh, which refuted those stories was unable to stop the momentum of the earlier false story like it's it's common cool Cool. yeah so cool Uh, the real mystery of this globster isn't the creature but rather the president of the museum of natural history what? Whoever this strange E. L. Wallace was remains Wait. a mystery, as he's never been heard from since, or nor had been heard from before. He seems to have simply only existed at this one Wait. singular point in history. Wait. So was he like a scam, or is he like an act? Like so? Okay, okay. So there's I'm seeing two possibilities here, right? Um. First, he was scamming, right? And like, scammers like be scamming. basically, he's like fucking British Columbia. No one around here has gone to British Columbia. I'm just gonna say I'm from British Columbia. Yeah. Or was he like an actual dude who just like didn't stand out in any way, shape, or form? I that I don't know. So I. I he's never existed right? because the the museum at British Columbia would have been like, oh yeah, that's our guy. They didn't do that. So he's just 
some guy at best. At best, he's some guy that was there and was having fun. And at worst, he was a guy scamming for at no profit. <laughs> Just bad scamming, I guess. I this don't is weird. know. No one has been able to confirm firm his real identity uh, or his status as two-time president of the Natural History Society of British Columbia. Whoever this mysterious man was certainly muttered, muddled the waters of the entire story, though, as you can still find accounts, particularly online, that inaccurately describe the sea monster as a plesiosaur or some other strange creature instead of the correct bear's beaked whale. Uh, in fact, it's still quite common to run across someone touting that a plesiosaur, perhaps one formerly encased in ice, or perhaps one living in modern times, actually washed up in Santa so, Cruz in so 1925. The thing, is, the thing is, so there's a the few f- things. Yeah. Right? Um, first of all, I love E.L. Wallace, and there's like a bunch of like Pokemon chimeras that have Dartrix with a human head and a Vaporeon tail for some reason. Well, no, it's a Dartrix... With a human body in a Vaporeon tail for some fucking reason. I don't know what it is, right? Um, but also there was one with, like, the, the globster's head on a suit, which was funny. Um, but, so... <laughs> okay. That's crazy. So I can tell you this Pokemon search result did not so come up new, when I was searching new, for him when I wrote this episode. Um... So, it's a new but, like, hit. I will say that the notion that there was, like, a plesiosaur trapped in ice and, like, it's semi-preserved and, like, you know, all that stuff, that's not, like, a completely insane idea, right? It's, it's, it's not... No, and I don't think it would be novel for the time either. Well, because, like, we, we, we definitely have mammoths that were trapped, but then again... Also, like, let's be real, uh, it was a lot hotter during the dinosaurs, so, like, was there enough, was it ever cold enough for the the plesiosaur to enter a period of being frozen? I mean, now that I'm thinking about it, I need to do a lot of research before I could say this was not a bad idea. I'm gonna, I'm gonna backpedal what I said. This is probably a bad idea. I, I talked myself out of it. I, I love the. I love when thinking out loud turns into immediately redacting statements. <laughs> Pretty much, that's like half of my life. Yeah, oh, that's the why. Theory. That's why it's hard for me to talk to people sometimes about like what I'm really feeling because I come up with really fucking bonkers and bullshit things, and then I'm like, no, no, that's stupid. But like, I get worried that other people are gonna be like, "What the fuck, John? Why were you thinking that?" And it's like. Well, my brain doesn't work right. So, like, yeah. <laughs> give me a break. <laughs> the theory that it was an aquatic uh, ancient reptile is particularly popular among certain fringe religious types, such as creationists, who believe the Earth is only 5,000 years old and that dinosaurs and man lived side by side. The California what, Academy what? of Sciences. Yeah. Fin- finish this. Finish. Finish. Oh, it's, the, the it's California lost. Academy of Sciences has a skull of the whale on display, uh, supposedly in Cowell Hall. If you're gonna try to find the exact location of it. Uh, okay. So, all right. Are they saying? Are the creationists saying that the whale was st- the the plesiosaur was still alive? Because, because like, the assertion that it was a plesiosaur came from somebody who said it was like frozen in ice which as i said just a moment ago um kind of seems like it's a more reasonable theory but like if you really look at it it probably isn't because of you know the things i was talking about um yeah that, that's one of those things that seems reasonable until you think about it yeah so like but like what's the i'm just struggling brandon the, i know I'm so i did i did I didn't pull the uh, creationist thread too hard on this one. I just mentioned it because it was mentioned, but I, d- I didn't chase it. I, that, you see, that that's something that we we've we we dive down frequently. I was like, I I think people can probably guess where this is going. I can save a page. I I <laughs> I would have definitely pulled that thread. Because you can. You can we can start going. like a, a spreadsheet of just unpulled threads. And have, like, grad bag episodes, normal episodes, yeah, and just, like, like, farther down the rabbit hole episodes. But you see, that one, that one's probably going to kill me. Yeah, we need a that, solid... I, I think, oh. I think 
when was the last time I did a creationist dinosaur episode? John, can you do can you do me and and the entire listenership a favor and just like start making a list of like creationist dinosaurs and just like once a quarter twice a year, not once a quarter, twice a year. Let's well, let's twice a year do a creationist dinosaur basic- episode. <laughs> That's basically what I do. Or not even a I, dinosaur, just other other cryptids that they latch onto. Like I, I kind of I kind of like like my my whole I, I get pulled back to it appear occasionally, but I need to yeah. take I need to definitely take cooldowns because it makes me very heated. There's I've got I've I've bus sixty for a dollar fifty bus brones. I'll I'll mail some out to you so you can you can just pop them as you write the episode so you won't go crazy. What was that? I didn't. You cut out when the, he said that. Oh, I said I said sixty for a dollar fifty bus bro. That that it's a anti anxiety like like take as needed pill. Oh. So I can just mail you a bunch of those as you write the episode. I, it's not anxiety though. Well, no, it'll just disconnect your brain from feelings, and so you'll be able to like write perfectly well. Will I? Yeah, so you'll write fine. You'll write without going crazy. But like, I don't think that it would. I don't think that that would be an enjoyable episode. I think half of the fun of me doing cryptid, like creationist dinosaurs, is the fact that I'm like deeply upset. (laughs) It's actually, uh, I like the written asides in those episodes because, like, you you can't so much so you you just can't so hard while writing it you put in the sides as you write it yes it's, it's fantastic. oh 100 percent. that's that's what i do but yeah. like like that's if i if i was disconnected from my emotions i feel like it would defeat the whole point of the episodes yeah because like the 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 final the final story is like pretty fucking it's, but like <laughs> it's about the journey and my my personal pain that everyone gets to experience. Yeah. <laughs> oh. So next up, we have the I know I'm going to say it wrong and differently every single time I say it. So we have the Ziumaru catch. In April of 1977, a Japanese fishing vessel named the Ziumaru was traveling off the coast of New Zealand when a large carcass became snarled in its nets. The rotting remains remain about, or uh, they weighed about 4,000 pounds, uh, and they were hoisted above the deck. Several pictures were taken, uh, and s- they show uh, f- horny fiber. What? Why did I write horny fibers? Thorny. I think I intended to write thorny fibers to, like, describe how uh. they look. Um, was preserved before it was cast back into the sea uh, as not to spoil the mackerel of the catch. Uh, the drawing by Michihiko Yanu, uh, a crew member with some biology training, depicts a plesiosaur, as does some uh, commemorative Japanese stamps that were issued in 1977. Uh, the tissue sample was taken from the carcass and studied so, by a team of Japanese scientists. I looked up what Zio Initially, means. the scientist, yeah, Zio means Zuya means, and I think it means marrow. Oh, what's it mean? Yeah, marrow. Um, marrow. So like I'm super confused because uh Z U Oh Genesis Park. Motherfucker. Um I looked up what it was in uh in translate and it was it was like uh it was like marrow. So that basically just means marrow ship. Yeah. Um oh. also also this looks That's a weird so name this, for a this, ship. this thing, right? The thing that got hoisted out. It looks a lot like um something that a like yeah. haunt would do, like a local haunt would do is like a creepy thing, right? Like it looks like a nondescript thing oh, that a local right. haunt would have and yeah. it's just like what the fuck is that? I I don't actually understand what I'm looking at. Um Yeah, so I I th- I think I describe it later, but in that picture, I think to the yeah. far left is the head, and then in the middle are like droopy arms. But it's decomposed to to a, an extent. I I don't believe there's any um, skin, so I think this is mm-hmm. like all just um, muscle yeah. and fat fibers with no skin uh, visible, which is why it looks kind of wacky. Well, it's, it's seventy seven. Plus, it's an old it picture. Like it's color, but it's still damaged. like sepia ish. 
Yeah, but it's it's cool looking, but it it, it really does fit that uh that horror uh house type of uh vibe. Um, initially, the uh, scientists at the Science Museum of Tokyo unanimously, unanimously declared that the creature was a plesiosaur. But after a French team became involved in 1978, a Japanese symposium uh, report stated that while the identity of the carcass could not be determined with certainty, the carcass was most likely that of a large basking shark. Uh, That's pretty fucking different. Pa- yeah. The paper... It's f- wildly different. We, we, they went from uh-huh. dinosaur to basking shark. Um, <laughs> and, and, uh, you know, one is probably easier to catch than the other. Uh, the paper is quite dismissive. I mean, one of them still exists. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the paper is quite dismissive of Yano, even though his educational qualifications and experience were superior to some of those that uh, disparaged his finding. The final report Who's itself... Yano? Yano uh, okay, was the crew member from the vessel. Yep. Yeah, okay. uh, the surface of the body was uh, whitish and covered with dermal fibers, which intersected each other uh, like in whales and other mammals, but were not weak as in fish. There were thick, white, fat-like tissues on the back, and reddish muscles were seen running longitudinally beneath the white tissues. Um, and I here's mean, an even better picture of it. Based right on there. his... Based on his drawing, there is no difference between what he... There's almost no difference. You can very easily get a basking shark out of his drawing. Yeah. I looked up yeah, what a, a basking shark looks like, and it's it's not very far off whatsoever. No. 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 Uh, the, no, that's, the that's, not a, that's not a crazy jump. No, it's, it's not even a jump. It's like a, a, a long step. <laughs> yeah. It's like a shot. Uh, yeah, the putrefactive smell was not like that of Telosian fishes or sharks, but resembled that of marine mammals. The head was said to have been hard, exposing the cranium, and not shark-like, unlike sharks in which the nares, which are the, the nostrils, are mm-hmm. situated in the lower surface of the skull. The carcass had nares at the front uh, of what remained uh, of the cranium, end quote. So, correct me if I'm wrong, but Plesiosaur wasn't a mammal, right? Like, I don't know. Right? I, w- I, I, like uh, the fact that well, it has "sar" in the name. I feel like bo- implies like, it wouldn't be. Bo- implies, yeah, it was a group of long-necked marine me- reptiles. Yeah, so yeah. it wouldn't have been a mammal. Yeah, it wouldn't have been a mammal. So, like, even if even if all this is true, like the things that he's they're saying, like they're not they're not supporting. The plesiosaur hypothesis. No, they're just they're just making the basking shark hypothesis weaker. Yeah, yeah right. They're not, hel- they're not helping themselves. They're trying to hurt the other guy. Yeah, like kinda. at best they're hurting that one hypothesis, but they're also harming their own hypothesis in the process. It's like, um. It's it's like when you it's, it's like somebody has you know a bug bite and you cut off the arm, right? Yeah. Like they got a bug bite <laughs> yeah. on their hand and then cut off the arm because it's like, well, fuck that. And it's like, yeah. oh, like you're kind of undoing everything, but all right, I'll let you. Uh, bold strategy, Cotton. <laughs> Let's see how it plays out. Yeah. Uh, basking sharks do not have nostrils on the front of their head, nor do they have red meat and white fat. They would al- seem also that this scenario was different from the various decayed shark carcasses sightings uh, to which the scientists have compared it. Uh, those other dead sharks floated ashore, while the Ziomaru carcass was found 30 miles off the coast uh, opposite Christchurch and was trawled off the bottom at the depth of 900 feet. The primary evidence given uh, in favor of the basking shark identification was an analysis of the chemical composition of the horny fibers in the tissue samples. They matched the, oh wow, here's a word, uh, elastoidin uh, from a known basking shark, but the horny fibers uh, are themselves not found in sharks. So, a number of, so, okay, the fact that it was, okay, okay. Really important. They're analyzing the fiber. Yeah. Really important here is the fact that like previous basking sharks had been um, found on like shores, right? Yeah. Um, 
this particular one was trawled at a depth of, as you said, 900 feet, right? And yeah. what that means to me is that it's probably not far enough along in the decomposition process to, like, resurface and get, like, carried to carried to shore, right? Yeah, it, it's either hasn't bloated, right, that the gases haven't expanded enough to allow it to float to shore. Or it's, or it's past that point. Decomposed past that point where yeah. it's it, it can't float anymore to get to shore. So it's um, it's at a different point in the, the process than the ones that they've already seen. So like Yeah, it like it doesn't mean that sharks can't decompose at the bottom of the ocean. It just means that they f- more frequently are found ashore because how frequently do you find a shark the fucking out in the middle of the ocean? Well to be fair you know, to be fair, like also I would say, I would argue that it's more frequent that they are found not on the shore, right? Well, they're not found most of the time. There, there's n- there's no one to observe them yeah. at that depth being decomposed because, like, yeah, people love beaches. People don't love being in the middle of the ocean. Like, the, the, the sample rate is, like, different. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> like, that's, that's all there is to it. At least that's how I'm interpreting yeah, that. Yeah, me too. Um... A number of researchers who have studied the matter aren't persuaded by the basking sharp uh, uh, explanation. For example, uh, Tokyo Shikama, who was the paleontology professor at Yokohama National University, was convinced the remains were a plesiosaur, saying that, quote, Even if the tissue contains the same protein as the sharks, it is rash to say that the monster is a shark. The finding is not enough to refute a speculation that the monster is a plesiosaur. Uh, Okay. So, there's a very critical, like, okay. <sighs> okay, Brandon. So, like, critically, this scientist doesn't it's... understand science. He He's saying, he, he, like, use, to use his own words, the, he, he, when he says the specu- of speculation, he, he's calling, like, the, the, the breakdown of what the tissues are as a speculation versus like him saying it's a police he just doesn't he just doesn't it it, the 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 key the key to proving that something is something right is like you don't you don't like just say something and until there's somebody you can't just it's the the fucking uh like what is it to prove a negative Uh, yeah yeah it it, it's you can't you can't prove a negative right so like you can't yeah. it, it's it's basically the same as saying like well this doesn't refute the existence of god the plesiosaur <laughs> what i'm trying to say is the plesiosaur is his god actually there's uh, you can I can prove God doesn't exist in three words. Okay. Steven Seagal's album. Done. Steven Seagal Done. existing. Really? Just Steven Seagal. Two words. Just Steven Seagal. Two words. Actually, his name was originally Steven Seagal. <laughs> I know. And the even funnier thing now is that there's a... a a banjo uh, band called the Steven Seagulls. So <laughs> they play some fun covers. He's not a good person. He's, no, he's not a he's good a person. He's a monster, actually. <laughs> he's, he's explicitly a monster. If you need someone to run over your dog with an armored vehicle while selling you fake cryptocurrency, <laughs> he's your man. I didn't hear about the run over your dog armored vehicle bit, but... Yeah, so Joe Arpaio, the like super yeah, that that guy from Arizona that, that mm-hmm. everyone's aware of, made him an honorary deputy. Oh, that's good. And there was a, I don't know what the call was for, um, but there was a call not for like like, not it wasn't something that warranted, if I recall correctly, response with heavy vehicle. But anyway. Steven Seagal, honorary deputy, took an armored vehicle to this guy's house. It was it was probably for like, enti- like, 
disorderly or like a spousal thing or, or something of that nature. So he runs through this guy's fence with an armored vehicle. But guess who was ta- guess who was on the other side of that fence? A dog. His dog. Seems good. So th- so he ran over some guy's dog with an armored vehicle for the sheriff's department of Arizona. What? I. So you know how he like claimed to be like a martial arts master or whatever claims yeah yeah totally totally believable yeah he carries a gun with him like 27 which to me is not he um does. if you're a martial artist <laughs> you don't need to carry a gun like if you're a martial artist of the caliber that steven seagal claims to be you do not need a gun yeah so a really fun thing with him is if you watch interviews with Steven Seagal and he talk when he talks about a mm. region, he starts taking on the accent what? of that region. For example, when he is talking about oh, blues no. guitar, he takes on like a Louisiana accent and starts using like oh, yeah. more, like ver- he takes he tries to be like sound more southern. But he does the same thing when he talks about like Asia and like Native American cultures. <laughs> it's the wildest shit. It's so fucking crazy. <laughs> what? what is? It's, I wish it's I wish so he could good. be. I wish I could consider him funny, but he is like, <laughs> he is a. He is a confirmed like. He's he's just someone who's like. He's like. That weird shitty guy in school well, who you're like, why are you lying like, about this? There's no reason to lie, like, but just always does. But then he just keeps getting away with it, and like people just keep like. But like, it's also uh, it's uh, also one of those things where that weird shitty guy like did a bunch of sexual assaults, and like was incredibly abusive, and so oh, it's not. Yeah, it's not yeah. just that it's like that weird shitty guy. It's like. The sex assaults and the yeah, and the he's state like he's like a bad guy, guy. The... <laughs> or something. <laughs> and on top of that, he lays very expensive guitars in the grass. Is that is that your greatest sin? I assume not, because he's he does you know, he does he does sexual assaults, but like, yeah, John. But some of these were very expensive collectible guitars. And he was displaying them on camera, just laying in the grass. Let's. Do you know what that's gonna do to the finish? Let's move away from Steven Seagal. That motherfucker. Doctor Fujiro Yusada, right? Just, just a harsh yep. segue. <laughs> from Tokyo University of Marine Science and Technology, agreed with Shikama, saying that the photographs show the remains of a prehistoric animal. After carefully reviewing the 1978 study, Malcolm Bowden wrote, "Quote: As I read this paper, it became clear." that those who had later written on this uh, subject had accepted the basking sharp identification and obtained almost all their evidence from one document. However, when I examined it, I concluded that it was an extremely unsatisfactory review of the original evidence and was heavily biased uh, in favor of the basking sharp uh, identification from the beginning. Creation um, Science Movement, Portsmouth, UK. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So that's <laughs> that is an important thing. So that's taken from the creation science movement. Movement. Uh, uh, well, it's from uh, it's written by Bowden Malcolm, uh, called the Japanese carcass a plesios- plesiosaur type animal in the creation science movement. Uh, um, from it has an exclamation point that you didn't read. They. You know, cryptid folks love throwing exclamation points. Even abominable science has like that exclamation point. Yeah, but that's that's making fun of. Oh uh, yeah, that's you're right. That's ta- fun. That's taking the piss out of. Gotcha. Yeah, gotcha. That's, I never that's a hundred percent. That's a hundred percent fucking with with like the sensationalism because like that book is very very not sensationalist. Having like read no. it, it's it's a very different take. Um, I should say. That this is this is always like hilarious to me because these types of things because like it doesn't use the original evidence that was all collated by one dude, yeah. <laughs> so right, like you one guy is capable of collating 
uh, uh, things. <laughs> but like, I'm what I'm trying to say is like, I I'm a I'm a researcher, right? Yeah, and. So, like, I I have a lot of phenomenological... I do phenomenological research, right? Which is different than this type of research. Which is not to be mistaken with, like, ghosts and shit. Not that kind of phenomena. I mean, I could use the same interview techniques to ask people about... could. ...experiences with the paranormal. There's no, like... There's no difference in the two, because they would be both studying... Because, like... The, the only difference is I'd be studying uh, people's, like, reactions to it, not, yeah. like, actual phenomena. But regardless, so um, a lot of the times what happens is I'm the, the primary, like, an- analyzer, and then I'll have other people, like, review my work, right? Because that's how science works. Um, so, like, I-, I really need to know more about the original paper, original, like, study, Because that is super duper important to contextualize whether or not this is a valid uh, statement. Also, also Malcolm Baldwin, Baldwin was the person who who said this. It wasn't even like, it wasn't even Dr. Fujiro, whatever, right? Yeah. Uh, Fujiro Yasuda. Mm -hmm. Yasuda. Um, Malcolm Baldwin, uh, or Bowden. Uh, let's let's just do a really quick, let's do a quick Google of this motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> writer, ah, uh, uh, okay, writer, the academic mafia, the corruption of science, and the forces behind it. Uh, he, he 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 he's at war with science. Yeah. Um. So I'm oh, gonna wow. assume this dude's got a this dude's got a history of just like not. Good takes. Uh, he has a YouTube question. channel. I Wait, is this the same that. guy? It it. Uh, I'm gonna get. I'll come bone in. I'm not. I'm not looking at him on YouTube. So like, here's the thing. I'll look at stuff all the time. I'll look at horrible shit and pollute my search history. I will not pollute my search history with with creationists. Bullshit. The- or rather, I won't pollute my YouTube with it. Yeah. He made a he made a book called Science Agrees with the Bible. These yeah. these these book covers are a nightmare by the way. Like the the lack of any form of graphic design is hilarious. Um <laughs> This is terrible. Like he like, oh 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 I found one good thing I found one good thing he has a video called Flat Earth Stupidity Exposed so he's not a flat earther he's got that going for him cool like a broken clock is r- right once whatever uh, yeah breakdowns are good for you a unique manual for true oh. biblical counseling but he's Reverend- also a geocentrist so the Earth's not flat but he is a geocentrist what. <laughs> Ape men, factor fallacy. <laughs> Big bang fraud. Uh the evidence against evolution and for creation. Oh, that's an hour long one. Oh, it's a five book series. Oh, true John, si- I've got the book for ag- you. No, true science agrees with the Bible. So it's uh, funny because there's like a bunch of shit that's mixed in with like actual authors, but like at the same time they're still bad. Oh, I bet yeah. you he's probably in this. Eat your way to lower cholesterol. Cut cholesterol. Hardcover. Great cholesterol what the con. Fuck? And myth for books collection set. He's a chart about breeding limits of species. What the fuck is the breeding limit? Well, that's yeah, that's fossils? that's just Nazi shit. Yeah. <laughs> Like, <laughs> oh boy, you... oh boy, what, uh, what? And now he's radiation, flood tablets. What the fuck is this? All right, I'm gonna get on with the episode. I'll send this just because I I want you to be sad. I'm not opening um, that. <laughs> one of the issues demonstrating the bias of those involved with the original collective papers report. Uh, was the decision not to invite Yanu, a graduate from the Yamaguchi Yano. Oceanological... Oh, 
Oshi. Why is it I can say Yamaguchi but not Oshi logical? Because you watch. And because you watch. Uh, sumo and Yamaguchi almost definitely comes up. Daily. Yeah. <laughs> there was. I watch what I put in my Brandon's boredom corner in in our Discord. It's the funniest shit. This is the first time in like two years they've been able to do off season like things for fun, and it's just normal dudes versus Rikishi, mm -hmm. and like it'll be a three on one, and they'll just like have a smile, not be breaking a sweat, just like one arm, just throw a guy across. The it's great. Anyway. To their initial meeting, which laid the groundwork for the study, although they informally heard from him uh, subsequently, he was never given the opportunity to make a presentation or submit a paper in defense of his conclusion. The crew uh, speculated that... Yeah. Okay. So, he's a graduate of the Yamagachi, Yamaguchi Oceanological High School and assistant pro production manager of Taiyo Fisheries. I don't see in that... in the, those uh, bona fides that he has any university or academic experience when it comes to making a paper no probably not um i mean it, it doesn't say anything about that i say that but like that's a little that's a little gatekeepy but at the same time like if they heard from him if they although they informally heard from him subsequently that doesn't sound like it sounds more like they interviewed him which yeah which i feel like i could see that i feel like is an appropriate thing because unless he boundarized his work against like existing literature and existing knowledge um it, it doesn't really mean anything to write like a paper you have to when it comes to writing papers you still like even if it's a position paper you still have to boundarize it against the current literature and the current state of the art so like it's not an insignificant thing to produce a paper uh stating a position yeah so Oh wow, all right, hang on, let me know. I'll do this. He has a website. Hang on. Boop. Yano does. No, no. Bowden. God <laughs> damn it, Brandon. <laughs> it looks exactly how you want. Oh, he's got Is a Christian counter. A Christian counter. It's the counter? number of visitors. The number of visitors that his website has is goes it's called the Christian counter. So 54,325 people has, have looked at his website. He is a web design guru. <laughs> is that what it says? Uh, well, no, I'm just saying that because of how it, it looks, how you think it would look. The text isn't green, but it's not far off. Well, he doesn't have, um, he doesn't have uh, his GTBS set up correctly. No, well, he, he invented his own um, acronym, uh, which is uh, da -da -da, like the Bible Counseling TBC. So it's oh true Bible counseling TBC creation evidence and charismatic errors in Christian essays. So he yeah anyway, uh, the crew speculated the creature could even be a massive turtle with its shell rotten off. The creature was in such a state of decay it was unidentifiable. The only photos, or sorry, only photos exist since Captain Akira Tanaka dumped the creature back into the water out of fear it would contaminate the there. rest of his catch. I agree with that, by the way. Like, you're a fishing vessel. Don't bring on rancid meat. Um, many creationists latched onto this creature. However, Trey the Explainer comes to our rescue, having much more time to do a deep dive on the Zeomaru uh, than I. Uh, and likely, he's going to do a much better job. Who's Trey the Explainer? Um, there were 42 I've samples. Heard of this dude. Unless you've mentioned him before, and I've just completely forgotten it. I thought I heard of you. Never no. heard of Trade the Explainer this is the before. First time I've heard of him. Unless we mentioned it on the podcast, and I forgot it. Don, am I bad at? Re Wait, are you saying this unironically? No, I'm, I'm having I'm a hard time reading your face. Like... <clears throat> You're no, being. Not really. You don't know who Trade the Explainer is. Not off the top of my head. What dinosaur is Trade the Explainer? Jo is he? Does he use like a dinosaur avatar? All right. Okay, 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 okay. Yeah, there was. I was falling for it very hard for a minute. I what? Like I heard from. I don't from remember you. this. Um. That no, no, Brandon. That's okay, not... that's sarcasm. Brandon, I literally <laughs> can't remember this. 
I, I. What do you really? I'm looking at this image, <laughs> and I've never seen this image. I, I have literally never, I have never once seen this in my life. This is not a joke. That's, I don't understand how that, yeah, his, his thing is Hi. like, his, he's a dinosaur as his, his YouTube um, thing. And he's on, he's on Twitter too, but he does like a lot of breakdowns of like this kind of thing. I have You've literally never, well, Brandon. Dead You're ass. Welcome. I have this never is a rabbit heard of hole this that I, you will legitimately or love. Whatever. Oh wait, maybe I saw. I might have seen what is Bill Cipher, a scientific analysis. You're maybe. welcome because th maybe this this is something you will legitimately be very into. This is right up your alley. Um, so you're welcome, I guess. <laughs> I legitimately have never heard of this individual. That, like, you, you calling it sarcasm, I, I'm not being sarcastic first time I've heard of this. I think you might have, like, seen something once and in passing mentioned it to me, and then, like, I got hooked. And that I was, might that have, was, like, that sent been you years a video, ago. but, like... But Brandon, like the thing is, like I usually this is 2013, so that's a long time frame for things to come out. I I must have seen something, but like Brandon, I I've I've had a weird like I've had a weird couple of years. So like the stuff I remember, the stuff I don't I remember and don't remember is all over the place. Well. You're welcome for this rabbit hole to go down because it's pretty great. And I think they're coming out with a um, a new video soon. Um, they announced it on their uh, 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 Twitter. Anywho, <clears throat> uh, there were four blah blah for you decades. Oh, there we go. It was a basking shark after all. Uh, there were many features, even with advanced decay, that were present uh, and specific to only the basking shark. The gills and jaw apparently rot away very quickly, leaving the appearance of a long neck and a small head. Mm -hmm. um, the pictures also uh, also show... <laughs> what the fuck is it right there? Oh, also Chao, Chao Mio Kamada. Um, super wrong spelling. Um, that is the connective tissue on the backs of fish and sharks that connect the skin to the skeleton. Okay. Uh, among many other features... Uh, that I won't go into, but the, there's a link down below uh, uh, for, for, for much more evidence. And then lastly, uh, we're going to go on to Gambo. Uh, on June 12th, 1983, 15-year-old Owen Burnham came across a very odd-looking carcass that washed up on the shore of Bungalow Beach in Gambia, is, West Africa. Oh, I was about, uh, to, I was about to make yeah. a joke. Is this, is this Bo Burnham's, like, older cousin? But I'm gonna assume no. <laughs> you know what's fucking weird? I mean, what? Uh, Bo Burnham like didn't grow up very far away from us, like, like in Connecticut. No, he didn't. There's like a non-zero yeah. chance that we could have probably gone to like something that Bo Burnham had gone to, like, like especially me, because like I was reading through because like, he was like. A religious kid growing up and I was a religious kid there was a non zero yeah. percent chance that I could have ended up at the same thing as him which is hilarious to there's me. a non zero chance that growing up we w could have ended up at the same mall at the same time yeah like because I went to like I went to malls in Connecticut all the time yeah. like when I was younger anyway um Having always been fascinated with nature and odd animals, Owen took it upon himself to document the discovery. Owen made quick work of taking measurements and sketching uh, what he was seeing in his notebook. Uh, satisfied with his impromptu exam of the large uh, dead animal, Owen packed up his stuff and continued on his way down the beach. Once he arrived at home that night, Owen went right back to trying to figure out what the creature he had discovered was. After searching through book after book of known animals, Owen began to realize that he may have stumbled upon something that was completely new. The next day, Owen made his way back to the beach to examine the carcass once again and take a sample. Um, as he was on his way to the location of the dead creature, uh, disappointment took over. At some point during the previous day, after Owen left the carcass, local villagers in the area removed the body, chopped it up, and buried it under the assumption that it had... Uh, was just an odd-looking dolphin on the That's beach. That's honestly not um, a bad assumption, 
and not an invalid thing to do. No, get that rotten thing off, yeah. and it's probably big and heavy and hard to move. Yeah. Cut it up. Don't drag it, you know, until he can get rid of it. Just put it in a hole right now. I mean, also, yeah. also Owen, yeah. Owen taking the sketches and doing the measurements. That's not bad either. Like, there's nothing. No, he did his own little Encyclopedia Brown, mm-hmm. got his sketchbook, documented it. Yeah, good, good on yeah. him. That's also, like, solid. Um, it's... Yeah, he's 15. That's a solid 15-year-old thing to do. Well, like, it's a solid thing to do in terms of, like, being a naturalist in general, right? Like, Yeah. Oh, I just mean that, like, adventures as a young boy growing up. That's a solid adventure. Oh, right yeah, there. no. Completely. Completely. Yeah. Uh, to make the situation even more disappointing, the head was decapitated from the body and sold to a tourist who was passing through the area as a morbid souvenir. Sounds about white. The only thing that... Sounds about white to me. Uh, the only thing that repeats, I bet he was also in a full fucking Probably. suit like Maybe the guy it's the at the same Caribbean dude. festival. It could. It was the same guy. <laughs> it was the same guy. Oh. Uh, uh, and then there was just one elderly, old white guy just dressed in like clothes with like Jamaican flag print on them and like a hat and like that. It, clearly wasn't meant for you but like well you seem like you're having a good time you're not hurting anybody i mean enjoy yeah. enjoy the food <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. though he's just all the dancing but like it was the kind of hat that's like meant to like hold your dreads and had like the chicken flag oh like a he, like a rasta style i'm not saying yeah i'm not saying he didn't have dreads but i will say it was a suspiciously flat hat. Oh. <laughs> and then if he did have dreads, that could also have been, I don't know if that would have made it better, but he wasn't hurting anybody. He was, he was having a good time. I was like, oh, that's, I don't think those are meant for you, but you have fun, old man. Um, the only thing that remained to prove, I should put that on the, anyway. Um, the only thing that remained to prove the creature uh, even existed was Owen's notes and sketches. Uh, measurements of the mystery creature taken by o- uh, Owen Burnham describe the aquatic anomaly being 15 feet long and 5 feet wide. The color of the s- smooth skin was brown on top and trans- transitioned to white on the bottom. The dolphin-like head measured 4.5 feet long, was 10 inches tall and 1 foot wide. Little black eyes on each side... At the front of the head was a beak that measured 2.5 feet long, a 5.5 inch tall, and 5 uh, inch wide. Inside the long beak were 80 teeth. I don't believe that he counted the teeth. He I kind of believe that he counted I the wouldn't. teeth. I wouldn't. Okay. This is what, 83? Yeah. Yeah. This is 83. Yeah. Game Boy doesn't exist yet, Brandon. Oh, true. Kid, kids... My daughter, my daughter will never know the pain of not being able to stop playing Pokemon because you can't just save when you're in the middle of a battle. You can't just shut it down and have it remember where you were. You got to get through it. You got to get through it. She will never understand my struggle. Nintendo Switch makes things so much easier. There should be like a mode that you have that you can turn on. That's like make your child suffer mode. (laughs) And it, <laughs> it's, it's mo- mo- millennial mode. We're just like, you just can't save things sometimes. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, don't turn off that screen. And no, no. It, it, don't turn off the screen and it has no battery indicator. <laughs> well, it does, but it's like, it's like you have to guess, right? Yeah. Like it's green and then it's, it's red and it's like, I don't fucking know how much is left. We're playing by the skin yeah, of our pants. We're, we're playing by the seat of our pants now, boys. Yeah. You're, oh, I remember those. We seats. save every three you're, seconds. You're, gosh. You save every three seconds. You go to the Elite Four at that red light because you're on that car trip. But ho, 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 boy. Oh, <clears throat> nothing, nothing is more stressful than doing really well with that red light. Um, nostrils were located at the tip of the beak and were close together. Attached to the bloated body were four flippers, although the one in the rear uh, appeared to have been almost ripped off the body. 
The flippers on the front of the creature measured 1.5 feet long by 8 inches wide. Uh, the area where the back flipper was torn off revealed large intestines within the body. Um, attached to the body was a long pointed tail that measured 5 feet long. There were no scales present anywhere on the body and also lacked uh, a blowhole and a dorsal fin. The whole story itself, or the whole story itself in this case, uh, is in question. Um, who is just strolling on a beach ready to decapitate an extinct marine animal? And how much is a decapitated marine animal head worth? And why is there a tourist just ready with cash in hand to have buy you, it? Have it, you it, ever it, met white people? It, I have. Because, like... Yeah. Like, that doesn't even stand out to me as a weird time. Yeah, but then even if they did get it, like, why did they decide to not be famous by, like, revealing the head of, like, an unknown species? Because it's a white to, like, person. like, the newspaper. And then, like, sell it to the British Museum, I guess? They didn't fucking know that. If it was an un... First of all, it's probably not an unknown species. Second of all, they probably wouldn't have even given a shit. It, it would have been a. It would have been like a weird. Like they probably might have taken the the meat off the skull, right, and then just yeah. had it as like a weird thing. Yeah, it, it's just that's just like the whitest thing. There people had fucking elephant foot ashtrays in Scotland, or or not what? ashtrays, elephant foot um, umbrella stands in Scotland. So like. Wait. That was that was that was how that's a thing. that was how the dude faked the the Nessie uh footprints. Or it was a hippo. Sorry. It was, it was a hippo. <laughs> there are elephant foot umbrella stands though. Yeah, no, it's a thing. So like like that's we got can, can we cool down with some of this shit? <laughs> like <laughs> Someone's gotta. So some people need to start telling other people that they gotta calm down a little bit with some of this stuff. I mean, that's pretty much white people. But every time that you tell white people they need to calm down with this shit, they they turn into like people need more diverse. They turn into groups. babies about it. Yeah. <laughs> oh, critical race theory is gonna teach me to hate our kids to hate themselves. Well, no, it's not. You fucking dumbass. No. No. It's literally just it's literally just correct history. Like fucking it's fucking weird. Yeah, I would I would even if they start doing like ACT, I still think that textbooks and I get it cuz like there needs to be like adult history classes that are also required still. I'll leave it there because I feel like, like, as a kid, I w won't appreciate, like, if someone goes into like the 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 breadth and depth that's required to really like gain a better understanding of some things. Fifteen year old Brandon not gonna appreciate that and just gonna be like, oh, I'm in class. Like, that there should also like, school should be longer. There should be like, here's a kid, and then like here's. A little bit later, you have to, to go fair, back when you like, can start appreciating shit honestly, a little bit more. the time frame that, that kids are in school during. <laughs> can you still uh -oh, hear me Oh, I now? stopped hearing the words that are coming Brandon, out of your I'm mouth. Here. My audio is I still st working. I still don't so hear the words see. that are coming out of your mm -hmm. mouth. Uh-oh, I still don't How hear the this? words coming out of your mouth. One second. I see a finger. There's a mystery afoot. A problem to be solved. Test, test, test. Detective Dern... D Detective Can Dern Durnham. I think it might... Is on the case. It might have been... Oh, wait, did I... Don't I know it was is a this a issue Brandon not, issue? Whatever. Oh, here you um, go. I don't even remember what we were fucking talking about now. Uh, it must have been no, a me issue. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't press um, any buttons, and now it's working again. So I, I, what I was back. gonna say is like the time period <clears throat> that um, like people are in high school is such a terrible time period for learning. Like, yeah, 
Like there, there's like education. Like let's school pre pre like before you're twenty. I feel like half that shit. Or a quarter of it, we should save till after you're 20, right? So lighten the load up front, let let you know, enjoy that time a little bit more, but then move that rest till after you're 20 and make it a little bit denser and like dive in a more deeper because a lot of that stuff needs to be explored greater than one page in a history book, you know, to actually appreciate and understand things. There's a lot of pedagogy problems with how education works so but that's not this podcast brand well actually no it kind of is this podcast it kind of is i wouldn't consider us like furthered education we're just drawing on threads more like like, i don't know i mean our our kind of core premise is is based on like enhancing like encouraging people to learn more so like yeah that's kind of yeah anywho Uh what, let's let's get back to let's get back to this this thing that's totally not a anything other than maybe a, a dolphin vest. Yeah. So in spite of being the most modern globster, Gambo is uh is alone in that both the Santa Fe Monster nineteen twenty five and the Zumaru Catch nineteen seventy seven have photographic evidence, as well as Trunko in nineteen twenty four, our globster from episode sixty one, who may or may not also be a penis. Um yeah, I'm pretty sure it was. Pretty and like many other carcasses claimed to be plesiosaurs, they only match the physical description believed to be correct at the time, and the photographic, uh, <clears throat> and photographic and described evidence at the time wholly excludes entire fins uh, or tail flukes, presently known to be extant on plesiosaurs, not just lizard tails, which is uh, present in almost all plesiosaur and pliosaur soft tissue impressions um which is another yeah, kind of issue mean, like all of the descriptions of the plesiosaur only match their known description at the time and don't match what the present description is i mean this is this is like the story right when it comes to when it comes to to like still living fossils right or living fossils yeah. is it's always it's always that type of thing. So like, um, fucking it's the rope in all, it's the rope in 2.0. It's the same shit. Yeah. Right. Like, Oh, the rope in mysteriously looks exactly like the dinosaurs that they showed the, the members of that tribal group. Weird. Huh? I wonder why that is. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, I just sent you another link to Bowden's website. This one has some fantastic Why are you 3D doing this text. To me? Because oh gosh. This this is I feel like this website is our equivalent of self flagellation. <laughs> no, this this website is your equivalent of hurting me. Yeah. For some reason the index has two X's. The index has two X's. Go go down to index page. It has two X's right yeah. Like what the fuck? Uh, 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 book prices greatly reduced. <laughs> enough of trumpet bol- enough of the trumpet bol- blowing and psychedelics. Let's get down to business. <laughs> See, I don't know if the two X's is like a religious thing or like. There was also a video he had like decoding like numbers with like, th- like the um, Hebrew letters of words like. De- numerology. like numerology stuff so i don't know if that's a numerology thing he's got some cds on on geocentrism geocentricity second improved animated full-length version of the video uploaded to youtube see under the page two new expo- explanatory videos on geocentricity <laughs> uploaded to youtube addendum giving the reason for william cooper's cowper's depression added to <laughs> depression article psychology debunked so the entire science of psychology <laughs> is he debunked it. I mean, so the thing, the thing about like, um, fucking eclipse. Well, no, that's eclipses is <laughs> how we know that the Earth is <laughs> round, right? I think. Um, it's not round, John. It's an oblate spheroid. Gosh. Okay, fucking Christ. <laughs> Oh, 
was the what was the proof for heliocentricity? We're done. Yeah, way. this is just so us like, reading Bowen's this website. Is, this is now me. <laughs> this is now me looking into things because I'm curious. This is not a Swiss site. We present the plain truth, simple and straightforward, with no gimmicks. Okay, yeah, so Venus went through phases like our moon. <laughs> well, John, well, John reads that. Uh, <clears throat> oh, wow. Uh, our website is CryptopediaCast.com. Our Instagram is uh, at CryptopediaCast. Our Twitter is also at CryptopediaCast. Our email is CryptopediaCast at gmail.com or us at CryptopediaCast.com. We have a YouTube channel where we upload things. You can use that to get a uh, text transcript of the episodes. Um, and it's uh, it's Patreon time. You know, I mean, this episode, you can thank ja the, the Jackalopes. They voted for uh, Globsters, a Globsters episode. Oh. Brandon, your your list for Patreon is like super. Oh, this old. isn't that. This is how you can date when I wrote the, this. <laughs> this 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 list is from easily March. Uh, let me pull up a more recent. One. <laughs> I'll read the recent one. Um. Also, uh, we know that that the Earth is heliocentric because of stellar aberration. Uh, in terms of like showing that there's a relative motion and all I don't know, like Bowden's so, got probably like what a 54 minute long video on why it's actually geocentric. I know. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I know. I, I I can't I can't argue with uh with a dude who looked at the Bible and said that hey look the Bible's here so like so that Bible's Japanese shark is actually a plesiosaur. <laughs> yeah. Or sorry, it was uh the Bible. uh. uh no, no, uh, 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 Australian. <laughs> New Zealand. Wherever the Kiwis are. New Zealand. New Zealand, that's where it is, yeah. God damn it. I'm trying to, <laughs> my, 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 like, computer is such a bitch right now. <laughs> what did you do to it? Nothing. It's just, it struggled anything. Oh. I'm trying to pull up the thing. Right, well, yeah. But yeah, no. Yeah, let's go. I'll pull up the Bennington Triangle. Scroll, 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 That's what scroll, I'm trying scroll. to do, Brandon. I'm literally just trying to open the Bennington Triangle. Oh, really? Yeah. That's, well, all right. Uh, Copy. Let me scroll down. <laughs> Pasted. Boom. There's the updated. <laughs> There's the updated. <laughs> I could have just done that. I know that's I'm still waiting. Well, that's. I said uh, I'll look at one. I'll look at another one. Literally, am just. I literally was just waiting uh, for the the page to load. Did you post it? In? No, I don't see it. That's bad. Yeah, I just updated the the. Brandon, you want to know how bad it is? Page. I still haven't seen oh, the update. Jackalips. If you updated it, I haven't seen the update. I don't know what the what? fuck is wrong with my computer, Brandon. Yeah. I don't know, but it, what is happening? I I still I'm I still scrolling down dying. to the bottom of Bennington Triangle, Brandon. Gosh, why don't right, you well, thank our, them? <laughs> our jackalopes? They're Clay Sinclair, Marty Von Party, Bird Schneider, Ledwood Sharp, Matthew Smith, Bushcraft Kelso, and Will Smith. Um, you could join our Discord if you want to help. Uh, uh, you know. Whenever I go to post something, as long as I've got options, I'll, I'll throw up what some options are if people want to you know, see what dictate what they want to see one week versus another thing. Um, uh, there's lots of fun, cool stuff on our Discord server. You could find my sumo stuff. Uh, there's cursed stuff. Uh, mostly Honestly, cursed stuff. Honestly, it, it's it all originally actually, started out as things, some things it's, weren't cursed, but like, let's be real, it kind of exploded out of cursed. Yeah. There's a, a cute images thing. <laughs> Do you have a loose jack? There was a pop and I, I can't know. hear you again. <laughs> uh, anyway, rate, review, uh, uh, as you can, whenever the option's available to you. Um, Spotify, I think you can you can uh, uh, review stuff maybe now. I don't know. Send in monster requests and, uh, uh, or stories too if you've got, if you experience test, something. Test, Let test. us know. Maybe we'll say it, what maybe we won't. Um, uh, we'll do requests whenever we can. Uh, can you hear what? me now? Okay. What? Can you hear me now? What is happening? I don't know what's <laughs> happening. Okay. Um, I, I'm John. 
my everything I hear you now. hates me. So like, uh, <laughs> I don't know what the fuck just happened. Oh, there it is. Now I can see all the updates. Uh, Instagram is Mew2057. Twitter is JF Dunham. Website, johndunhamgames.com. And my email is john at kpdcast.com. <laughs> My Instagram is donkey underscore hands. My website is boyerv.com. My hey, email is the, brandon at cryptopdcast.com. And my Twitter is at crypto brandon. Uh, Tom's in, the Tom, our art comes from, uh, from Tom. His Instagram Tom is Tom's Tom. Michael Hill. Uh, <laughs> his website is greatergloryco.com. And our email, his email, our email. I'm so used to saying our email. Uh, his email is tommikehill at gmail.com. <gasps> my computer hates me. So, uh, as always, as always, <laughs> I'm John. It does. And things are going to get weird and, and buggy as shit, I guess. So, have I'm fun Brandon. with that. I'm Brandon.